This video will show you how to do an ellipsis excision as a workshop. The goal of this video is to create a safe and effective way to learn and practice an ellipsis excision in a cost-effective and accessible way. I would recommend pausing and rewinding the video when needed so you can get a better look at what's going on. An ellipsis excision tends to be a surgical excision which is often a single stage diagnostic and therapeutic intervention. This means we're taking out the queried lesion and also looking under a microscope to see what's the cause. Dermatological indications can be often split into pigmented and non-melanoma skin cancers. Some possible contraindications to be aware of is that larger skin lesions might have a lot of tension and therefore difficult to close. Local infection can be a contraindication as well as allergies to certain equipment used. This workshop involves using a piece of pork belly as a skin replica to be able to practice and perform the skin excision. Pork belly provides a cheap and close replica to operating on real skin, but of course if this is unsuitable to you for any reason whatsoever, you can always use a skin pad for an alternative. Often your clinical skills room at medical school may have the equipment and even skin models to use instead of pork belly. So to start the workshop, start by getting a marker pen and putting a 4mm dot. This is going to be our pretend lesion for excision. For today's workshop we're going to use 2mm margins, but this can vary in clinical practice. Using the marker pen creates the, the design where there's a ratio of 3 to 1 for length and width, as demonstrated on the right hand side of the video. The apical angles, which are the angles at the top and the bottom, should be ideally less than 30 degrees. This is to help ensure primary closure is possible. Notice how to create my ellipsis, I have followed the direction of the folds of the skin. This is to reduce tension and to help primary closure. In a clinical setting, would provide local anaesthetic using a field block, both intradermally and subcutaneously. Apply three-point tension as shown in the picture around the ellipse. Hold the scalpel so that the end is 90 degrees perpendicular to the skin. Using the tip of the blade, pierce into the skin and use the belly of the scalpel to cut through following the lines of your drawing lips. Ideally, you want one smooth continuous pass from one apex to the other. The depth of the cut is required to be down to the subcutaneous fat. You can repeat over the same cut if you need to go deeper. Using a pair of forceps or a skin hook, grab one of the apexes at the top or the bottom. Using some scissors or a scalpel, start separating the excision area from the underlying tissue at the level of the subcutaneous fat. Make sure you're cutting in one uniform plane, which means one direction. Once you've got the excise piece, put it into the specimen fort for analysis, or in this case, put it to the side. In a real clinical setting, bleeding can be stopped by applying pressure using gauze. Now we're going to close the wound. This tends to require a two-layer closure. What this means is we need a series of interrupted deep sutures, which are first used to remove something called dead space. This allows the superficial areas to come closer and for wound healing to be improved. The deep sutures tend to be inverted in angle for a better cosmetic appearance. To perform a deep suture, do an instrument tie as you would have learned in medical school, but only through the subcutaneous fat. To go through in detail, using a needle holder, insert the suture needle at 90 degrees into the subcutaneous fat. Push the needle through the other side of the wound, exiting at an equal distance still within the subcutaneous fat. Pull the suture through and perform the first throw of the knot by wrapping the suture twice around the needle holder and pulling the free end through the loop. Repeat the throw in the opposite direction to secure the knot. Typically three to five throws are needed to secure the knot. Cut excess suture material. Finally, to close the wound, perform simple interrupted sutures or use any acceptable closure method. And that's the end! Some complications to be aware of include bleeding, wound infection, damage to nearby areas, and scarring. Some information to let your patient know after treatment include dressing and bandages can be removed 12 to 48 hours afterwards. Ideally clean the wound with soap and water up to twice a day. Using a barrier cream such as petroleum jelly can be helpful in keeping the wound safe and clean. In terms of removing sutures, it's best to contact your GP, or it might depend on your local provider. And finally, thank you for taking part in this surgical workshop. I hope this was a good way for you to practice your elliptical excisions.